In this video, we shall cover the following. 1. How the Maya philosophy developed. 2. An example of Maya philosophy. 3. Gaudapada's Maya theory. 4. The soul of Gaudapada's teachings. 5. Appearance of the world. 6. Devi Shakti. Maya is the fundamental principle of Shankara's Advaita philosophy. The great works of Vedanta wholly support the view of Maya as explained by Sri Adi Shankaracharya. Many people today believe that this philosophy has been lifted from the principle of emptiness of the Buddhists. On closer look, we shall find that the philosophy of Advaita has filled our Vedic scriptures. Hence, there is no question that the philosophy of Advaita is much older than any Buddhist philosophy. It can be safely concluded after reading the scriptures relating to the Rig Veda that the concept of Maya is as old as the Rig Veda. The concept of Maya was specifically extracted by Sri Shankara's Guru Sri Gaudapada and developed further. Shankara further crystallized the concept and expressed it in great detail. Since no scripture was specific about Maya, there was confusion about the origins of the Maya concept. The problem is that people felt that Maya was a living entity just like Jiva or Bhagavan. People did not realize the true meaning of Maya. Maya actually means that which is not. When something appears real from a specific standpoint alone, then that is Maya. Maya fails to fulfill the condition of reality from all aspects. Reality is when a certain entity maintains its position from all aspects. For example, the objects of the world represent Maya. Why is that so? For example, a certain thing appears like a table from a general standpoint. But when we investigate further, we see that the table is actually a lump of wood. When we further investigate the wood, we see pores in the particles of wood. On further investigation, under the microscope, we see a different structure of atoms which does not come close to the appearance of a table. How can the same object lead us to multiple conclusions? Advaita Vedanta says that everything that we see around is appearance alone and hence a product of Maya. For example, a person A has a certain view of things and will only observe that entity from this specific point of view. An individual B sees the same thing from a totally different angle or perspective and draws his own conclusions which are in stark opposition with A's findings. Neither A nor B have a real view of that entity as it is. Thus A and B are in Maya. Hence, Maya is not an entity but a warped view of things or even a warped idea. Some call it an illusion. One of the most brilliant works on Maya is Gaudapada's Karikas, an explanation on the Mandukya Upanishad. There are four parts or prakaranas to this great work. There are some important observations in Gaudapada's work. At one place, Gaudapada says that the world is like a world of dreams and also like an illusion or that which is not. He says that wherever there is multiplicity, it is duality. Duality represents extremes and intermediary states of different proportions. This, according to Gaudapada, is the nature of illusion. In other words, duality is an illusion according to Gaudapada. Brahma Satyam Jagat Mithya is the soul of Gaudapada's teachings. Everything other than Brahman is illusion. Somewhere in his work, Gaudapada refers to Maya as the power of the Lord, the creator in action. When Brahman is in action, Brahman assumes individuality. Since Brahman has individuality, it also possesses power and that power is the power of Maya. This is Gaudapada's firm opinion. Illusion is there wherever there is a display of power. In many ways, it implies that power display has no reality. 
it is a mere illusion illusion can never remain forever the lord creates the world out of his great illusive power called maya the lord is brahman and the whole world is jagat or the power display of brahman it therefore implies that the world is an illusion this is the truth of the statement brahma satyam jagat mithya brahman is true and hence eternal maya or the world is the display of power and hence mithya or illusion at some places gaudapada also likens the world to swapna or a dreamy state he says that the waking world has no substantiality whatsoever hence whatever we find objective which we can pinpoint are all false mere imagery with no stuff this gaudapada calls atman's avidya or the inherent beginningness of ignorance thus gaudapada claims that plurality is in itself an illusion he says that brahman is real eternal it is the only one to exist the combination of the being and non being is jagat the world it is like the conscious magician who pulls out rabbits and pigeons from his hat all this is possible due to the creative potency inherent within brahman and yet the outcome of the creative potency is a mere illusion make believe the world is like waking and the dreaming state coming together according to the bhagavad gita maya belongs to the lord anything that belongs to the eternal causeless has to be divine thus even though maya is an illusion it is divine in all respects because it is managed by the lord himself which is directly revealed in the gita it is also interesting to note that gautam buddha's mother was also called maya devi the word maya is definitely related to energy which is the female aspect of the lord's creative and manipulative potency most of the female aspects within nature directly or indirectly represent the creative or manipulative forces in ancient india the female figure has been compared to wealth wealth is a great manipulative force assisting mother nature in nurturing the universe wealth has another name referenced quite often and that is maya maya also means the one who abounds in riches maya also directly means devi lakshmi she is the operating power of lord vishnu the great lord manages the affairs of the world only with the support of devi lakshmi the manipulative potency of the lord in the samkhya philosophy maya is nature prakriti or primordial matter there is an important connotation to the word nature or prakriti maya is temporary or illusive by nature but the source of maya is prakriti prakriti is real and permanent unlike the changing aspect of prakriti who is maya ever changing temporary and illusive primordial matter never changes it is the eternal changeless cause for change or maya samkhya philosophy looks at the root of brahman the ever constant maya the ever changing at the root of brahman is purusha while at the root of maya is prakriti the whole system of samkhya explains the causation of the visible universe based on the manipulation of prakriti caused by its union with the changeless purusha